This sermon was written by Pastor Overman about a week ago and emailed to me. And the title of it is Life According to Grace. In Romans chapter 6, Saint, I can't read this. St. Paul addresses what it is like to have your life completely reformed. He shows us what it means to be completely set free. He shows us what it means set free from sin in order to live a new life as an obedient child of God. In Romans chapter 6, St. Paul helps us to relive the moment when Jesus transformed us from sinners to saints, so that as saints of God, we can live a new life according to his grace. Let's examine the former lives in which we lived. Imagine with me a young man. Let's call him John. He's nice enough. He's friendly enough. He's an all-around good kid. Now, one of his friends has just introduced him to a new hobby, collecting baseball cards. When I first read this, I wanted to name that friend Josh. But not just baseball cards. He collects cards of all kinds. Baseball, basketball, football, fantasy cards. I don't even know what those are, fantasy cards. The others I know. All sorts of cards. There's a real rush to open a new pack of cards and sort through them. You find the rarest and the best card in the pack. In the pack. You stare at it, take it in. You see its value and appraise it. You begin calculating if you can sell it, or even better, if you can trade it. Other cards in the pack pale in comparison. The rush of finding it is an intoxicating high that keeps him addicted to the hobby. The problem for John is that it is expensive. No matter how many chores he does or how much he saves, he can never get enough. Well, his friend Josh had a solution. He took John to a local card shop. John's eyes widened as they entered. There were all sorts of cards. One in particular caught John's eye, a rare one, locked under glass, valued at $100. As John stood drooling over it, his friend Josh looked to see if the coast was clear and grabbed several packs of cards and shoved them into his pockets. Then he grabbed several more and shoved them at John to stuff into his pockets. Well, confused, John did as he was told. Then when no one was looking, they walked out the store. John's heart raced. He couldn't believe what they had done. He couldn't believe that they would get away with it. When they got home, they sat down and opened the packs. Rush of searching through the cards for the true rare ones was more exciting and intense, intense than ever before. John was not only addicted to the cards, but knew he would steal again. And he did several times. After a while, John and Josh went back to the card shop. Both boys had planned to steal again. It had become so easy. They just picked up cards when no one was looking and stuffed them into their pockets, believing that no one was ever the wiser. In this instance, the boys were laughing and carrying on as they filled their pockets, as if they were mocking the store clerks. When John turned to leave, he felt a heavy hand fall on his shoulder. His heart felt as if he had jumped from the high diving board. He had been caught. When his parents came to get him, he burst into tears. He knew it had been wrong, but it was so easy. So easy that he had almost forgotten that it was a sin. His parents had a long talk with him and encouraged him to speak to his pastor. Well, that was a task that John dreaded. It was hard enough to talk to his parents about it. But his pastor? What would he think? How would he react? He would throw John out of the youth group, for sure. His life was over, and he knew it. When they got to the pastor's office, they were told to sit down. His mom immediately began to speak. She was almost hysterical ranting about her, how her sweet little boy could do such a thing. John sank into his chair. Dad spoke angrily. This is not the way I raised my children, he shouted. 
and he continued to shout, but John sank lower into the chair. Sobbing into his hands, he had lost his family's trust. He had made them so angry, he had hurt them so badly, and he was hurting too. Now it was the pastor's chance to speak. He spoke slowly and sternly. He opened up his Bible and read the Ten Commandments. Got to number seven, thou shalt not steal. Those words truly stung. He asked John, do you know what you did wrong? The boy nodded and sniffed back a tear. Do you believe that my forgiveness is God's forgiveness? The pastor said again. And all in the room said yes. Then let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With those words, John's dad put his arm around John and said, I forgive you too. His mom kissed her son's cheek and repeated the father's words. And at these words, John's heart burst and the tears began to stream down his face. He had done nothing to receive this kind of forgiveness and love. It was overwhelming. He couldn't keep it in. He felt free. The burden of disappointment and hatred lifted from his shoulders. He was free. Free to be a part of the family again. Free to hug his dad and kiss his mom. He was free indeed. Well, the pastor, mom, and dad agreed that John would still do some extra chores and help out more around the church. But John was all too happy to do it. He was forgiven. He could now use his hands for God. His hands that were once instruments of theft and sin, he now used proudly in service of God's house. He was happy to pull weeds from the church flower beds. He was happy to vacuum the pews. He was happy to be forgiven. In many ways, we can all relate to John. We all know what it is like to be enslaved to sin. It never seems to happen on purpose. And the more we sin, the easier it becomes. The easier it becomes, the more we delight in our sins, until we forget that there, there were even sins in the first place. By the time we realize we're sinning, we feel entrapped by them. No matter what, we cannot seem to get away. And this is where St. Paul reminds us of our freedom in Jesus. In Romans chapter 6, verse 18, he says, You have been set free from sin. Of course, he's talking about our freedom in Jesus, that Jesus Christ was thrilled to use his hands in service of God's kingdom, that Jesus had his hands pierced to set you free. Having been crucified on the cross, he poured out blood from his hands, feet, and side as the full payment for our sins, the payment to buy us back from the power of sin and Satan, and to adopt us as children of God. Raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Through Jesus we are free. You are free. It is in the promise of this new life and freedom that Paul inspires us to let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. But present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. We do not live under the law, rather we live by the grace of God, fully free. We do not have to live using our hands and feet for sin, but we can use them in service to God. In that story, the forgiveness that John found in that pastor's office changed his life. He was free. The constant rush of finding the rare card was no longer a concern. It was as if they no longer mattered, because he knew he was doing something far more important. He was serving God. John gladly came to the church. He got rags and dusted benches. He straightened up books in the pew. 
He went out and pulled weeds. Although the work got tedious, he didn't mind. He knew he was working for the righteousness of God. There's so much for us to do. There's so much that we can do with our freedom. We can come together and pull weeds. We can paint walls and classrooms. We can vacuum pews and dust benches. We can build a whole new church. We can do so much more. God sent Jesus, and he set you free. Free to use your hands and feet for righteousness. You are free to pack bags at the food pantry. You are free to donate clothing to the homeless. You are free to love your neighbor as God loves you. You have been set free from your sins. And like John, this freedom will change your life. So let not sin reign in your hands and feet. Rather, set them apart as instruments for the righteousness of God. Amen.